So <clears throat> this uh, video is going to be how and when to use metformin. Uh, <clears throat> so my, my experience is that this is a drug that needs to be used much more commonly than it is. Uh, one problem is many of the physicians involved in caring for prostate cancer uh, don't really understand or know the characteristics, uh, limits, and benefits of this drug. So by way of background, metformin was released in the late 1950s for uh, diabetes. Uh, it has been a mainstay of diabetic treatment ever since. There's extensive clinical experience, uh, multiple randomized controlled trials. Much more is known about metformin than almost any prostate cancer drug. And I say that with considerable confidence. Uh, but it isn't only used for diabetes. Uh, randomized controlled trials have shown that it prevents pre-diabetics from becoming diabetic. Uh, and that's particularly something that seems to be missing. Uh, many patients come to us with pre-diabetes and neither their family physician, their internist, or their cancer doctors uh, are doing anything about the pre-diabetes and uh, metformin is uh, shown to reduce the odds of your moving from pre-diabetes to diabetes. Uh, and diabetes is really not a nice disease. Uh, an, another important issue with metformin is it is generic with multiple generic manufacturers uh, and the price can be as low as four dollars for 90 pills. Now of course in the news there's all this information about the expense of new drugs and uh, any new oral cancer drug seems to be priced at around eight to ten thousand dollars a month. Uh, so this is a hugely different issue. Men on hormonal therapy develop insulin resistance, and insulin resistance manifests itself by metabolic syndrome, which is hypertension, prediabetes, uh, visceral obesity, uh, and so hormonal therapy does uh, trigger these things. So many men on hormonal therapy become prediabetic, or through prediabetic, go on to full-fledged diabetes. Uh, and in other settings, that would be an automatic indication uh, for trying metformin. There is a randomized controlled trial uh, that looked at men placed on Lupron alone versus Lupron and plus metformin. It shows a very dramatic impact uh, on metformin, uh, on the odds that the patient will develop prediabetes or metabolic syndrome. Uh, so evidence-based medicine, uh, if you really believe in it, uh, would dictate the common use of metformin in patients going on hormonal therapy. Additionally, uh, the drug appears to have activity against prostate cancer. Now, by way of revisiting it, proof that a drug is of value in treatment of a disease involves phase one, where you increase the dose steadily to find the maximum tolerated dose, not needed for metformin, it's been done. Phase two is where you take a defined group of patients with the disease and test a fixed dose of a drug to see if there is uh, a response rate. That information is then used to design a randomized phase three trial which is the ultimate proof that a drug is of value. Of course, phase three trials aren't perfect, so you'd like to see two or three if, if uh, you can. Um, well, we have a phase two trial uh, for metformin and prostate cancer. Very carefully done study, Swiss study, uh, that showed roughly a 25% response rate of metformin in patients who had failed hormonal therapy, where chemotherapy would be the next option. Uh, clinically, it's easy to miss the anti-cancer activity of metformin uh, because it develops slowly. 
Uh, if you expect to see the PSA fall through the floor uh, in the next three months, forget about it. The impact of metformin evolves slowly uh, over 6, 12, 18 months. Uh, in fact, my experience, it continues to improve as the years pass, and it appears to reduce the aggressiveness of the disease. But of course, we need that randomized control trial. Of course, one of the problems here uh, is at $4 for 90 pills and a generic, uh, there's no financial incentive for any pharmaceutical firm to fund uh, the randomized control trial. And in the U.S., that's the major source of funding. Uh, so we might not get a phase three trial. Uh, unless it's funded by a nonprofit organization or the federal government um, or in some other country with a different healthcare system. Now, the question is how to use the drug. Uh, and the full dose of the drug is 1,000 milligrams twice a day. Uh, the cheapest pill is the 500 milligram. So, full dose would be two 500 milligram pills twice a day. It's important to take it with meals, uh, not on an empty stomach. Uh, people, the major side effect of the drug is in, in the GI tract. Uh, diarrhea uh, is a problem. There we've noticed an adverse interaction between curcumin uh, and metformin. It's not good to give the two together. The risk of GI problems seems to skyrocket. Uh, and since metformin is so dramatically more active than curcumin, it essentially has eliminated the use of curcumin in many of my patients. Uh, the second is uh, weight loss. Uh, so actually, metformin is the best documented pill for weight loss. Uh, safest and best pill. Uh, randomized control documentation. It's thoroughly effective for weight loss. I, I love it. Every year there seems to be new supplement for weight loss, and the data supporting those claims is for shit. Excuse my French. Uh, but there, there's no supplement that has been validated as a way of weight loss, weight loss, safe weight loss, period. We have metformin. It is widely available, thoroughly documented for weight loss. The problem is some people lose too much weight. So we do some see some patients, they start on metformin, and their weight just collapses. And they have to reduce the dose. Gastric upset can occur in some patients. Not common, but definitely there. So our approach, I'm a pharmacologist, and I know one man's meets another man's poison, is to adjust the dose per patient. So we start with one 500 milligram pill for breakfast. Let two or three weeks go by. Make sure you're having no side effects. Then add a second one for dinner. Let another two or three weeks go by. Make sure you're tolerating it. And add a second one for breakfast. Another two or three weeks, add the final dose for dinner. Our goal is the, is the highest dose that has no significant side effects. This is a drug for chronic use, daily for years, and you simply can't afford uh, significant side effects. And there are some people who simply can't take metformin, uh, and they'll quickly find out, and we just have to not use that agent. Uh, but again, this is a drug that should be used much more than it is. It definitely works for the metabolic complications of hormonal therapy, the weight gain, the prediabetes, etc. cetera. Uh, it may have anti-cancer activity. Until the phase three trials are done, we're not going to know for sure. Anecdotally, I've seen responses, but uh, in anecdotal data, you can't talk about frequency, uh, impact on survival of the natural history of the disease. So the argument for using metformin predominantly now uh, is for the prevention 
of prediabetes and metabolic syndrome in patients on hormonal therapy. I hope that helps clarify for you the use of metformin.